amazing. Once well, you started nice, it sounded uh, good. I couldn't believe that that exhaust is like uh, a baby's breath. It's, it's hardly hot at all. Well, they say uh, it's cool uh, to the touch, but I mean, it's still 220, 230 degrees, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but who's going to walk around sticking a hand in the exhaust tube? <laughs> well, I think we should make the point that it's the efficiency is the difference between the, the heat of combustion inside the cylinder and the heat that comes out the exhaust. Right. Right. The more heat, the, this is what they call ejected heat. Okay. The more heat you got thrown out of the engine. Now, the RX rotary engines, okay, Mazdas. Right. Uh, it's in, in, unbelievable. They have an EGT, exhaust gas temperature, over 2,000 degrees. They're venting a burning, expanding charge. Wonderful machine mechanically, but thermodynamically, it stinks. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't want a stainless steel exhaust system. With this, you can have a plastic exhaust. <laughs> okay, plastic I exhaust. This about the heat. That's great. Remember I showed you about the way that spike? The earlier you can get rid of that heat in the cycle, it makes common sense. The longer I expose that heat to the engine surface, the more of it I'm going to lose. Mm -hmm. All this performing work to push the piston down. When it happens and it spikes, bang, it hits the piston like that. That, then uh, you've got tremendous efficiency because you can light the charge off much leaner. Mm -hmm. They say as much as 50 to 1, some of these guys on the net. But from my experience right here with this little snowmobile carburetor, I'm only open like a little more than a quarter of a turn. Let's take a how you've got that set up. On the low speed? Oh, yeah. A, a little more. And I'm not even using a high speed. All right. And what I was getting for RPM, I don't really know. But... So, how, uh, what gave you the idea to use a snowmobile carburetor on this? Well, the reason being is uh, when I found out about what Russ did to modify the Vacturi carburetor, he modified the needle. I'm saying to myself, well, we need a carburetor that's got to be readily adjustable. The carburetors are adjustable, but you've got to take them off, take them apart, put the parts in, try it again. With this, you can adjust on the fly. And that's how I finally found it in 99 when I was working with this. I was getting, it was hunting for the mixture. I just opened it just a tad and kicked the timing forward a little bit and bang, she took off. What that means, the exhaust temperature is going to drop. It's no longer going to be 700 degrees. It's going to go down about 200, 220. All right. And uh, the beauty of that is economy. There's mm -hmm. a thing called brake-specific fuel consumption. How much fuel does this use to give me one horsepower? Mm -hmm. Okay, in, in, in contemporary thinking right now, it's a half a pound of fuel will give you one horsepower for one hour, all right? Bork claims to cut that in half. Now, I don't have anything charted out on graphs and stuff, but my seat of the pants work with this carburetor, and what I know about how these work on snowmobiles, I'm going to tell you right now, this one's very, very lean. The two-stroke is great because the oil I'm using to lubricate the top end is also used as fuel, and your plugs come out very Oops, uh, nice and clean. Let me get a focus on it. Oh, wow, that's very your nice. It's a beautiful clean. light gray. It's right. Already, that's a color we're looking it's for. It's not polluted exactly. at all. Right, and the, the plug is, is relatively cool. That's incredible. There's not so Bork is entirely right. What he's designed. There's a lower end section here that's capable of taking a shot of detonation. And the reason being is the rod is all one piece, okay? Mm -hmm. When you hit the detonation shot here, it goes through the webs directly to the other side where it compresses in next charge. The bottom of the piston is inducting for the next charge. This piston is transferring, and this just finished its power stroke. So you get intake compression, power exhaust in one shot. And the reason why this is good is because I can take this and put it in a press, obviously. There's no way. You can put a lot of pressure yeah. on that. Now, on a connecting rod, regularly, your rod is going to be off center like this. When you push on it, what yeah. happens? Yeah. Okay, you're getting a side load this way. Yeah. And this is what happens when you get too much side loading. And you'll hear it inside your engine. You're going to hear it yeah. rattling and breaking down, and then you're going to get scuff marks. Mm -hmm. Okay, because what's happening, so much energy is being released so quickly on the top of the piston under detonation, it, not on this rod, but I mean a regular rod, mm -hmm. okay, and when that happens, the rod's at an angle, you get a force into the cylinder wall, and if it crushes the oil film, you're going to hear 
Ah. And that is premature wear in the engine because that is metal to metal contact. And if you keep going far enough, you're going to have this. So we have a lot less, if any, side loads on the cylinder walls zero. because this is zero. It goes zero. straight down. Now, if you the, look pist at, the piston you ring takes it all. Uh, if the any. piston rings, yes, and those are also specially designed for low compression. I use those out of modern motocross. And on this one, we don't use liners anymore iron liners for the bore like they did in the other engines. These are aluminum and this is a spray metal coating which is finished off the side. Is this like the Porsche 928 uh, used to have a, some kind of a silicone or silica? What was this? Yeah, they, they, there's all ways to do it. I think they got the, they do it with uh, Nicosil. Nicosil, that's the word I was looking and for. And there's a couple other things with chrome. And uh, uh, we went with this and also uh, Bob uh, ordered up uh, pistons that have a very, very, very uh, slippery friction coating on mm -hmm. Okay, because in the Bork engine, because, let me pull a piston here. Now that we don't have to use the piston for side loading anymore, gotcha. we can do a different function. Mm -hmm. And this is a Bork piston, and you'll see a slot. I mean, you're not going to see that in a regular engine. This is actually a little bit flexible. Ah. Okay, see it? Mm -hmm. Fills up yeah. a little bit. Oh, yeah. All right, these are preloaded against the cylinder wall. Now, the thinking being, when you get into the detonation area, you're releasing a lot of heat real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've got to keep that piston cool because what will happen is if there's clearance around the outside, when this starts to detonate, it'll get so hot so quick, these piston skirts will slam in a conventional engine, will slam into the cylinder walls and uh, cause the thing to seize up. It's called a cold seizure. We learned about all that. Do they, is it heat expansion the, from the, yeah, the heat? It, it, by the time it heats the cylinder wall, it can't get it rid of enough heat to slow down the expansion rate. Mm -hmm. And so you'll get a stuck yeah. piston. That's known as a, and your engine's not even warm yet, and your piston's stuck. Yeah. So what the work did, let me get this out and show you. All right. Well, We're going to need to wind it up pretty soon because I've got a limited battery limited life. Limited battery. And, and what Russ did on this, um, um, get, oh, getting rid of the side loading, um, if we put this in water, the piston, and hit it with a torch, you can't burn a hole until the water's gone. That's heat transfer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one, as long as these are preloaded against the cylinder wall, we're not going to burn a hole in the top of the piston. Nice. And you're not going to hear it rattle. Uh, Roger, wall. before we go, uh, look at the swirl built into the top. Is that uh, a uh, Bork design or is that a... Uh, no, this is a, something Bork came up with. Uh, yeah. They experimented with it with two strokes, but the idea being is when the charge comes in, it goes right up, right out the exhaust. I got you. Ports. What they did, this imparts a cyclonic motion with these ports back now, the, the charge instead of going this way is going this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that really limits the amount of unburned that you have. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. when I check the unburned against New York which was uh, 180 parts per million mm -hmm. uh, on New York testing equipment made by Hamilton Standard, we only got half that. And we did not have a catalytic converter. No cat. No cat. Okay. No catalytic converter necessary. And a government guy says, well, you know, I said the government guy, the federal law says we have to have a catalytic converter. He says, well, take a piece of PVC pipe and write on a catalytic converter and stick it on the engine. <laughs> and that'll cover you. So they're yeah. not... Yeah. Used to this happening because yeah. every IC engine has got to have a converter. Absolutely. And one thing I want to cover, actually, since we are HHO, uh, what would your guess be about whether this would run on HHO or, or hydrogen? Uh, as a given, I don't know. But mm -hmm. if it will uh, run under detonation, as long as the expansion rate, we can induce it and it's not too powerful, work is the engine to use it. Okay. Because we don't have that side load to worry about. All right, folks, uh, we're going to have to wind this up, but here is the engine. Uh, Roger Richard has worked on this for many, many years, as he said. Uh, he's a true expert. If you've ever had any doubt, you've seen for yourself. And uh, if you have any interest, we are hoping, if we can get everything put together, that we can come up with gen sets. This is only 30 cubic inch. Uh, engine and it's running what a 24 did you say kilowatt 24,000 24,000 watts, yeah. 24, watts. It's run at 18,000 yeah real realistically that, yeah. yeah yeah so uh, and that's more efficiently than any engine that you uh, that we currently have in the internal combustion the game world plan is equal engine equal generators equal amounts of fuel go yeah let the winner the one running longest obviously is the most efficient
Yeah. And that's what I'm going to do with the pro is show that uh, Bork, Bork was absolutely right. Bork, unfortunately, uh, 75 years ahead of his time, and we're still struggling to understand really what he was saying. Well, Roger, let's get this done. And folks, if you're interested, please uh, contact the number at, uh, that you see at the end. Uh, we might even take a waiting list for people that, that have a sincere interest. Uh, but we do appreciate your interest in uh, the Bork. So uh, this is Dave D, PowerGate Technologies, over and out.